Joining me now is Leanne McAdoo, and we're going to talk about the latest data dump of Hillary emails that came out at the end of the year during the holidays. <laughs> is it enough to send Hillary to prison, or does anybody really care? So Hillary would say, what difference does it make? Right. <laughs> That's, and a lot of people are saying, oh, I don't care. Fellow, yeah. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Senator, of, Senator of the White House. Well, that people are so matter. used to criminals running the government. Yeah. They're just, yeah. you know, numb normal. to it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's exactly, you know, her response. She goes out on the Sunday shows to sort of respond to whatever scandal is going on um, during the week. It's all over the news, all the talking points. So then she'll go on a, a softball interview to respond where the, whoever is interviewing her is never going to get into a That's heated right. exchange. They won't challenge her. And so with this latest email dump, they thought what they, they had would be this smoking gun email that would prove that she violated uh, federal laws. So this was an email exchange that she had with Jake Sullivan, who was then her deputy chief of staff. Now he's her campaign foreign policy advisor. <laughs> so she's waiting for these talking points to come through very impatiently. And Sullivan tells her that this the source is having trouble with the secure facts. So Hillary, she orders him to strip the data of its markings and send it through a non-secure channel. So that is an order to violate the laws of handling classified information. Yeah, if it says classified on it, just scratch that off. Yeah, don't worry about through. that. Just yeah. send it through. Just reclassify it yourself. Pretend that it's not classified. Lie about it not being classified. Alter the document. <laughs> yeah. Falsify it. Send it through the facts. Yeah, and then, of course, now this is someone who said that she she never got any classified email sent to her private server. Well, now is that because she's had them all stripped of their markings? I mean, this yeah. is someone who's well-versed in skirting the federal laws. But take a look at this clip. This is how she went on the Sunday shows because she knows she's going to be speaking to her voters, uh, mostly people who aren't going to educate themselves and just want to believe whatever comes out of her mouth. Aren't you ordering him to violate the laws on handling classified material there? No, not at all. And as the State Department uh, said uh, just this week, that did not happen, and it never would have happened. What's striking about that particular email is it suggests you were very facile with how to do this, this process. You knew the instructions about how to get around the restrictions for sending classified information. Uh, so you're saying there was never an instance, any other instance in which you did that? No. And, and, and it wasn't sent. See, so it's just the hubris with her. And so, of course, from other emails we've seen, this is someone who's had to ask for help with how to use her iPhone, how to use a fax machine, how do I, you know, hang up the phone to send a fax? I mean, so this is someone who... Well, look at this, this one here, that this is pointed out by the Observer News. I say the irony of one of these is Hillary expressing surprise about a State Department staffer using personal email for work, which she wrote on her own personal email. Right. So, I mean, she's saying, hey, yeah. wait a minute, he's using his own personal email for, and, and she's doing that on... on uh, Her private server, <laughs> private yeah. Server. Well, this is, this is just more proof that the laws do not obtain yeah. to them. Like, they yeah. don't have to worry about those. But see, it's not just how to skirt these federal laws. She's also figured out how to skirt around public corruption laws, too. And that is why now the FBI is expanding their probe from just the use of her private email server. Now they're looking into public corruption. And this is due to mm. more than a year's worth of um, journalism that's come out, basically showing how she was using her State Department and her Clinton Foundation was basically a slush fund for yeah. this. So now you'll think of 20 nations that donated to the Clinton Foundation. Um, 17 of those had more robust weapons deals than in the um, the last three years of the previous administration. It's so just a coincidence. How does that happen? Because President Obama was elected on an anti-war platform, mm -hmm. right? And then all of a sudden in those first three years when Clinton is running your State Department, um, you are ramping up arms deals to the unsavory Middle East countries. How does that happen? You slip a little money into their foundation. And so that's what they're looking at. 165 billion worth of commercial arms sales to 20 nations. Uh, that's nearly double the value of what was made to those same countries and approved during George W. Bush's. So, right, the Republican Party is the warmongers. And then, of course, with the uh, 151 billion of separate Pentagon broker deals. So basically, 
organizations that donated to the Clinton Foundation, they saw a 143% increase in the amount of weapons coming in their way, whereas with other nations that didn't donate, it was about an 80% increase. So this is someone who's saying that this campaign, she is pro-women, she's going to be anti-gun, she's going to go against the gun lobby. Meanwhile, she is ramping up arms deals to nations mm -hmm. that are n known ethics violators and monstrous toward women. The women in Saudi Arabia just got the right to vote a, a, like a month ago, two months ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then of State course Department the Department was a perfect lobby. place for her to hang out, not just because yeah. she wanted to get uh, international experience on her resume, but because the Clintons had already been doing a lot of deals, a lot of crooked arm deals through the, the Bill Clinton administration. So right. it's just a perfect place for her to continue that. Right. And not to mention, you know, General Electric, they, uh, they're more than, I think, 40%, 50% owners there of NBC when they decided to go ahead and give Chelsea Clinton that cushy job as a but correspondent. Of course, what difference does it make? 46% of the people <laughs> say they wouldn't want to see a, a candidate who's been charged with a felony, but 47% think that's just fine. More you can than, be a felon. Wow. So what difference does it make? Well, we've got uh, <laughs> an interview here, uh, clips from the interview that Roger Stone had with Alex Jones earlier today. He's got the complete dossier on the Clintons and his book, The Clinton's War on Women. We're now selling it at the InfoWars store bookstore. Uh, you can get that there. Here's an excerpt from Roger Stone's interview with Alex Jones earlier today. Former campaign advisor to Donald Trump, friends with Donald Trump. Donald Trump thanked Mr. Stone uh, for asking him to come on the show when he was here a month ago with us. Speaking of Mr. Trump himself, strategy to have him win these primaries, what the Republican establishment is going to do to try to stop him, and then uh, talking to Mr. Trump, how he's doing right now. I mean, he's got to be pretty excited that he's weathered every made-up storm. Yeah, no, he had a very strong week last week. Uh, look, I think uh, he wiped the, the war on women issue away for Hillary and the Democrats. If they thought they were going to play that old saw again, it's not going to work, and Trump served them notice. That's a big, big page that has to now be ripped out of their game plan to try to win this election. Look, I think Trump is the only candidate who can win. And I must tell you, he's, in, he's uh, feeling good. Uh, he is in a fine mood. Uh, you know, I, uh, I think that, uh, that it is, uh, you can see that he's having fun. He's drawing enormous crowds, 10,000 people in South Carolina. Everywhere he goes, he is uh, pulling extraordinary large crowds. Uh, there's an enthusiasm. Alex, this is an insurrection. This is an uprising. This is the underclasses saying we're fed up with the two-party duopoly. We're fed up with government that, that, uh, that costs us a fortune and delivers nothing. We're fed up with a foreign policy that seems confused at best and treasonous at worst. We're sick of not being the tro to told the truth about most issues. We're sick about marching off to war without understanding where our national interest is. Uh, we're, we're, we're sick of having our emails and phone calls monitored by an oppressive big brother government. The people are angry. The key to Trump's election is many people who have stopped voting because, like you and I, they've become disgusted with the two-party system because the Democrats and Republicans are in it together. The Bushes and Clintons are in it together. Or people who are new to the process and just have a general disregard for voting because they don't think it'll make any difference. Sure. How big is it, though, record numbers won't identify as Democrats now in Gallup? Yeah, no, I think the, 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 the tea leaves of the polls are very good. I caution you to say they're going to change dramatically. Poll out today shows that more women think that Hillary Clinton uh, it, it treats women better than Donald Trump. Uh, and that doesn't surprise me because the truth about the Clintons has been suppressed by the mainstream And media. that's why it's key to get your book and all this proven documentation out. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely true. Look, uh, we know that when NBC had their chilling interview with Juanita Broderick, a woman who was raped and bitten by Bill Clinton in 1978 when he was attorney general, they sat that on, sat on that at, at NBC for weeks. And they, they weren't even sure they were going to run it. It was a very fine piece of television journalism by Lisa Myers. I invite anybody to go to YouTube and watch it. This woman is compelling. That's and we should all write articles about that report about Juanita Broderick. We should all bring that back up because yep. to use a Hobbit analogy, uh, this could be the black arrow that brings down smog is the information in your book that's so well documented. Well, I, I'm hoping that is, that is the case. Uh, I do think 
that only Trump has the courage to, to continue to drive this home. Uh, plus, only Trump uh, would rebuild our military. Only Trump would uh, destroy ISIS and stop this pinprick nonsense. If we're going to engage, then let's engage with a strategy that can succeed. I'm not an isolationist. I'm a non-interventionist. 